runaway inflation set to soar above 7%, a figure never even seen in a Bank of England forecast before. Interest rates hiked with more on the way, all this adding up to the biggest forecast squeeze to household income since records began. Worse than 2008, worse even than 2011. In fact, only the third time that post-tax incomes has ever gone negative. The Chancellor of the Exchequer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sunak, allegedly a small state Tory, again required to step in with a new £9 billion rescue package. Right now, I know that the number one issue on people's minds is the rising cost of living. For me to stand here and pretend we don't have to adjust to paying higher prices would be wrong and dishonest. But what we can do is take the sting out of a significant price shock for millions of families by making sure the increase in prices is smaller initially and spread over a longer period. The Chancellor's announcement came hot on the heels of the new price cap, set at an eye-watering £2,017. But £200 will now come off bills for everyone in October through a smoothing loan to energy firms, who will claw the money back from customers over five years from 2023. There will also be an additional targeted £150 off bills through a council tax rebate for people with properties in bands A to D. The real question, of course, is will the actions of the Chancellor be enough? The picture painted by the bank today was pretty bleak. Their forecast implied three more interest rate hikes. We haven't seen anything like that in 20 years. Since records began, we haven't seen disposable incomes fall this far. Not even close. An extreme trade shock on top of a once in a century pandemic shock on top of Brexit. This is a real decline in living standards and it's going to hurt. People like Lowry are feeling the pinch even now. I'm already struggling um, not being able to pay all my bills. And so any extra uh, is just more stress um, on a daily basis. For example, you know, if my mortgage goes up £50, I, I don't have £50 to pay it. I just have to cut back wherever I can, sell things on eBay. Lowry is a single mother. She relies on universal credit and says she's terrified of her next heating bill. I don't have money for fuel. I don't have money to buy food when we're out and about. Um, there, there are no treats. I have to constantly say to my daughter, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't. Those realities leave their mark. I can't see a way out at the moment. And I know there's a lot of people feeling like me, just particularly hopeless. If it wasn't for my daughter and my dad, maybe I'd have given up. It's soul destroying, waking up every day, looking at the bank and seeing nothing. I've, I've um, sorry, it's just hard. I'm, I'm 51 years old with the only option of, of a tiny bit of work, earning the minimum wage, which even if I worked 40, 50 hours a week, still wouldn't pay all the bills. The Bank of England says it's acutely aware that low-income families face stress, but insists it has to act. It's a hard message. I know it's a hard message. I'm not, not, not going to, in any sense, hide from that. But if we don't take this action, it will be worse. We went into the COVID recession and the banking crisis with fiscal and monetary policy working together to expand the economy. We're going into this one with the Bank of England trying to slow it down and the Chancellor delivering a small energy package alongside a thumping big tax rise. Now, that is a hard message for British households to absorb.